Welcome back to the show. It is now time to go to WWE for the weekend. Before I get to Saturday night's main event, I just want to say something. Last Friday night, SmackDown, when Mick Foley was on the cutting edge and he cut that promo, that was one of his best promos ever, I felt. It was just unbelievable. And it shows once again why Mick Foley is one of the maybe 20 greatest guys on the mic ever. Ever. He's just so unbelievable. So, uh, without any further ado, let's go to the Saturday Night's Main Event Report. Saturday night's main event came to us from the nation's capital in Washington, D.C. last Saturday night. And this one will probably be forever called Jenny McCarthy vs. Autism, a bloodbath made in hell. No, seriously though. No. Um, first of all, it was only an hour long, which is a thumbs down. Saturday night's main event should always be an hour and a half like it was back in the day. Um, there were three matches on the show, another thumbs down, and they really weren't announced. The only one that was announced was Jeff Hardy versus Ed, the main event. Um, you know, and there really weren't that much great action. I mean, for me, the only best match there, in my opinion, was maybe the eight-man tag. Because the eight-man tag told a story. And, you know, this Saturday night's main event, and I'm going to keep it clean, because this is a clean show in my, or I try to make it clean, was a cluster. That's about as far as I'm going to go. It was a cluster. Thumbs down, all the way. I haven't seen every Saturday night's main event. I will admit that. But, this one was the worst one ever. The only reason why it was on was because to help promote Jenny McCarthy and her, you know, fight against autism, the reverse autism bull crap that it is. And let me just say, and I'm going to be off topic of wrestling for a moment, but I, you know, Jenny McCarthy has a kid that has autism. I understand that. I work with special ed kids. I work with kids who have autism. And for, you know, th this promotion was totally wrong. It was done at the wrong time, I feel. And I respect Jenny McCarthy and I respect what she's trying to do. But if you're going to do it on a show, don't do it on a show that only comes on once or twice a year. Do it on a Raw. Do it on a SmackDown. Hell, if people are going to watch, do it on ECW. But don't do it on a television program that A, comes on twice a year at most, and B, if they put it on at the right time, puts it on at 11.30 p.m. at night instead of 9 p.m. So, to me... Promotion-wise, both WWE and Jenny McCarthy lose that battle. And, it, like I said, it was a complete cluster. The only funny part about the show was the end when MVP kicked Jeff Hardy and as he was going through the crowd, he was saying, Excuse me. That was the only funny part about it. Other than that, worst Saturday night main event ever. There, I've said my piece. Now, to Raw. Now, like I said at the beginning of the show, I missed the first 30 minutes. So when I turn it on, I see GM Mike Adamley on. 
And he's congratulating Stephanie McMahon, obviously, for having her second child. And this, is, this just gets funny. I like this segment. He says Mazel Tov. And I know Mazel Tov is Jewish. You know, it's a Hebrew saying. And it gets funnier. Then here comes Beth Phoenix and Santino Morello. Who, Santino, by the way, is working the unibrow. The unibrow. Maybe the greatest thing to ever happen in wrestling. So they're talking about having a match with um, um, Kofi Kingston and Mickey James. And Santino, who calls him at the Male, which is hilarious, which proves Santino is the best, one of the best today. You know, and then at the end, Adam Lee, or at the Male, says Mazel, or not Mazel Tov, it was, uh, a re or, what was it? It was something Italian. So, basically, Mike Adamley, we've proven tonight, speaks Jewish, or he speaks Hebrew, and he speaks Italian. Mike Adamley, international man of culture. Um, so, later on, CM Punk faces Chris Jericho and JBL in a two-on-one -on -one handicap match, which I must admit was a very good match. It was a hell of a match for it being a... 10 minutes long, B being a handicap match. It was just a great match and a fantastic ending, and I never thought I'd say that about JBL. He had a fantastic match with a fantastic ending. It was unbelievable. And then um, Kane has a match with Matt Stryker, and Kane was probably the most over guy in Tennessee that night, which is absolutely amazing because Kane is supposed to be a heel, and yet the crowd cheers for him as if he's Stone Cold Steve Austin. It's absolutely amazing. And then, <coughs> excuse me, and then the main event, the tag team titles on the line, Cena, Batista, are facing Rhodes and DiBiase for the titles, new tag champs, Batista and John Cena, and I gotta say, I hope that they don't have Cena and Batista as champions for a long time because I was really getting used to DiBiase and Rhodes as tag team champions. And I think they were starting to impress everybody as a tag team. But I really hope that they don't keep the belts on Cena and Batista for like six months. I really hope not. But uh, I do have to say... Mike Adamley's first night on the job as GM of Raw was absolutely fantastic, I thought. So that really made up for Saturday night's poop. On that note, it is time to go to the SummerSlam report. Of course, SummerSlam is one week from this Sunday night, live August the 17th on pay-per-view, 8 p.m. Eastern time is the start in Indianapolis, Indiana. Now then, last week, these matches were announced. Edge to face The Undertaker inside Hell in the Cell. Triple H to defend the WWE Championship against The Great Khali. Mark Henry to defend the ECW title against Matt Hardy. And John Cena to face Batista, which now makes it more interesting that both men are the World Tag Team Champions. Since last Friday's shows, a lot of interesting things have come up, so let's talk about it. CM Punk defends the World Heavyweight title against JBL. JBL won the opportunity because of the handicap match. MVP will be one-on-one -on -one with Jeff Hardy. A most interesting tag team match. It's winner take all. Kofi Kingston and Mickey James will meet Beth Phoenix and Santino Marella. Now, the stipulations to this match. The person who scores the ball wins both the Intercontinental title and the women's title. And Shawn Michaels will be making an announcement at SummerSlam about his future. Is he going to retire or is he going to stay in the business? Only one way to find out, ladies and gentlemen. Pick up the telephone right now. Call your local cable subscriber and say, hook me up 
with SummerSlam. It only comes once a year, and you really don't want to miss it. TNA and Ring of Honor are next.